Okay, so I've finished the amazing King Arthur Legion 9 and I figured I'd make a couple of build guides about what sort of builds I went with with each of the characters um, explaining my thought process, something that you guys can use as a player as you're going through the game, maybe it'll help you out if you're stuck or whatever. So we're going to start with of course Gaius Julius Mento, our main guy. Now for this build there was a couple of key attributes. The first attribute was Invocation of Mars. The reason being is the AP cost is really low, but you get a damage boost, which is perfect. Now when it comes to the damage boost, there are other options around here you can go with. For example, the 10% weapon damage, which stacks on top. There is the duration is increased by one turn, and these two were key at the very early stages of the game. Overall, this would be four skill points, so just two levels up, and it's worth dipping into this. Now when it comes to doing the builds in this game, I really found it easier to plan ahead for certain things. For example, when it comes to Mento, my biggest thing was Bleed. Inflicting Bleed so that holes on top of the damage they could already take. And with my team set up, how it worked was that they would get Bleed damage, they would get Poison damage, they would get Fire damage, and Necrosis every round. Now when it comes to your Bleed, passives down here are your best friend. For example, here's attacks cause Bleeding for 4 turns. This was amazing because just your standard attacks instantly get buffed. So this was one of the very first things you should pick up if you're going through this build. For weapons, the Bloodletting Runa power was amazing. I again got this very early on, and it really fits the Mento build. As you can see, plus two weapon damage, so just a base plus two, perfect. Plus two bleeding duration, which means this, stacked with this, now causes bleed for six turns, which is enough to take out a lot of enemies overall. It also paired amazingly with Invocation of Mars as it reduced the cooldown. So not only do we have the cooldown of this now reduced by one, we also have it extended for another turn. So you can keep just popping it. Really powerful. Now with Mento, I think your best bet very early on is to really focus on your passives like I said. For example, plus 50% weapon damage for bleeding effects. Again, ties into our bleed build we're doing. Really effective at taking enemies out. This paired really well with uh, Quick Footed, so it's very easy to get opportunity attacks um, because you can accidentally misclick if you move a square uh, over, even if you're still next to the enemy, so if you just move one over, even though you're still in combat with them, because you've moved slightly in melee, you do take that hit. So this was a nice way with Mento of dipping around, smacking one enemy, getting bleed, running off and smacking another, because Mento's attack is only 3 AP. So if you stack this off, you could get two or three attacks per round. And Invocation of Mars and Bleed, huge damage. And because Mento is so good now at inflicting bleed and killing enemies and darting around the, dart, the uh, battlefield, Motivate. Allies gain plus 10 weapon damage on their next attack. This is amazing. Um, basically, you kill an enemy and your allies get extra damage on their turns. It's a phenomenal passive. Alongside Strength. 10 extra weapon damage on top. So your passives with Mento are really your best friend, um, especially early doors. You could probably get through a lot of the game with just with these to most, and pop in Invocation of Mars. Now, I also went with all resistance, and you might be thinking, why is that? Well, there's a few options. Number one, I really wanted the evasive, the minus four damage from ranged attacks, because I often found that Mento was stuck in the forefront. Because he's such a damage dealer, he'd be nearer to the archers, just because he's more in melee. Therefore, minus four damage, you could really negate that. Some turns I was taking two to three damage from one enemy, um, and that's a huge lifesaver. It means you can basically tank ranged attacks for the rest of your party without even meaning to be a tank. There was also the Ruthlessness, regain four vitality for each kill. Now this was amazing, because not only does it four vitality each kill, and it increases by one every five levels, I also had armor where I could regain 3 vitality for each kill. So it means even if I was in the forefront and getting hit, every kill I was getting 7 health back. Which means Mento was really good at darting around dance field, uh, dance field, the battlefield, chipping away at enemies, killing them, and just siphoning their health. Which means in a really nice world, if you have... Let's say you've got um, Drukus taking down enemies with his spears and Nerva, and they've chipped away and you've got like two enemies on like 10 health. Mento could run in, 
kill them both on one turn, and that's 14 hit points back. Really nice way of then also saving your potions for your other characters that might need it. Now, jump and attack, you start with this, it's okay. Um, jump to target and do 100% weapon damage, it's not bad. It's not amazing though. I would personally stick with strike. Now you get this instantly, but you can really buff it. Plus 15 weapon damage. Strike causes 20% vulnerability, means they take even more damage. You have strike causes 10% weapon damage against bleeding enemies. Again, really focusing on that bleed. And it can cause the target to become marked, and allies deal an extra 10 damage against that marked unit. This I didn't really use personally. I found Mentor was really good on his turn at chipping away enemies so they almost died. So I tried to leave those enemies alone so they either died from the bleed and saved other people's turns, or so Mento could then kill him on his next turn and regain that health. So again, when it comes to your skills, really focus on your bleed in my opinion. That's what I did. Stack up all the bleed damage. I would then focus purely on your uh, base damage with like your strike and stuff. And effectively, you can pop your Invocation of Mars. This would be what I first start with. Pop this and then gain these two here. The Deep Consumption and their Assurance of Victory. Work on your passives and get the ability to run around, get the ability to uh, cause bleed, really buff the bleed, focus on your strikes here, and then take your all resistance just so you get the bleed duration, you get the minus four for damage, and the regain four vitality. Pair it with something that will heal you, so you don't have to worry about potions, as well as an item that will buff your bleed and your invocation of Mercury, or Merle, sorry, and I promise you, the enemies will drop in health instantly. It's an amazing build, huge DPS, and is really, really good. At just ki killing enemies and regaining health. Perfect, perfect build. Now, when it comes to rings, there's a few things you could do. For example, I just took this plus two damage uh, until the end of the encounter for each kill. Really, again, because he can run around the uh, battlefield and he can chip away enemies and he causes the bleed. The plus two damage always stacks up and it's so good at dealing that. And I dealt with this as well just because one turn duration of Invocation of Mars again buffs that. 5% armor breaking is okay, physical debuff resistant really worry with, but again really buffing my Invocation of Mars, making it last longer, hence 25% extra damage, plus all the extra damage on top of bleed, plus the bleed damage. Mento really can be a force to be reckoned with and he's so easy to level up. So as a quick reminder, Focus on the Invocation of Mars first, and I'll probably take these two passives, or sorry, extra buffs here. Then work your way through your passives. I would then go into All Resistance, and I would then grab your Ruthlessness to regain health, and your Evasiveness. I would then buff your Strike Up, because even though this is going to be your base little attack, the amount of bleed damage you're going to do, the extra damage from Invocation of Mars, really allows you to negate this until the later stage of the game, um, and you can really just do a huge amount of damage and then this is a nice sort of like power spike higher up as they go. And they might be wondering about the other abilities. Well, execution I never really used until the end of the game. The AP is low which is nice but didn't really come in handy. Terror, I don't think I used it once despite buying it. And as you can see Parasite didn't buy anyway. There's enough cover in the game that I don't think you need it honestly. Now, when it comes to these skills, backstab, I would suggest getting this eventually. Um, I didn't really backstab enough, but if you can get quick-footed and pair it with backstab, that is going to be key for dealing out even more damage. So if I was to do this run again, I would take backstab and I wouldn't take execution or terror. I would take backstab and then I would go in here and I'd take finisher for the extra damage. i will take focus strike for the armor piercing and I'll take weak spots for the extra weapon damage on bleeding or poison targets, and Mento deals out bleed like crazy, and Drukus deals out poison like crazy. So bear that in mind, focus on this as well. I'll probably dip this in before you worry about your strike. Because um, again, this power, or the damage you can deal with this, is going to be more useful to you, especially when you can move into a backstab position thanks to Quickford. Then it will just have a standard attack a bit buffed. And if you can inflict that bleed, that's going to be better for you in the long run than just focusing on your main attacks. Now, that is my build for Gaius Julius Mento. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Any other things you'd change about this build, other items you'd use, let me know in the comments as well. If you're new and not subscribed, you'd like to. That would also be amazing, and hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.